uh, who are tuning in via YouTube. Uh, my name is Kevin, and I am with a company called the Weird Homes Tour, where we like to show off unique and creative homes around the U.S. And uh, today we are being joined by Celia Quinn in Houston, Texas, and uh, she has uh, what we call the secret garden home that uh, has this really wonderful garden when you're going up to it. Uh, her street is lined with uh, car dealerships and, you know, Houston, you can see everything, but when you show up, it's uh, this garden oasis. So uh, Celia, why don't you get started and show us around a little bit at your home? Yeah, lost connection. Hold on a second. Now there's no connection. Can you hear me? Yeah, it looks like the connection is a little bad okay, right okay. there. You want to just right, go inside? So I, just, I, I just stepped too far away, but we can start now. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Okay. All right, so here we go. This is what's in the front yard. This is the first thing you see when you drive up. And it's my mojo tree. It's a gold tree with a lady face and red hair. Because I had much keys I needed to use. Hands. Birds. So there's that. And then there's a rabbit topiary here been struggling with keeping it green this summer but there it is and so now let's uh let's go ahead and go oh here's a little small pond here just a little thing now we'll go inside wonderful and uh for all those who are watching uh if you have any questions just let us know and then uh, we'll, we'll ask as we go so <laughs> Okay. All right. So here we are going inside. Let me turn a light on. I meant to have all these lights on. Could you could you turn that one on? Okay, so this is the this is the living room. And the first thing you see when you walk through the door is my uh, marketing mannequin holding my brochures here. And then there's another mannequin over here that I call this Manny Quinn. It's a um, mannequin that I pasted art uh, addressing men's issues. It's on the thing, you have to pull it. Oh, <laughs> and uh, I don't know why it's not focusing. Oh, there it, there it goes. Okay, I'm sorry. Here's my... Uh, scare off the bad spirits. And then as you walk into this area, you can see the aviary. And there's my dove. This is flower. And here's pink. And there's a little diamond dove up here. And they, they live in this aviary. <coughs> And there's a, you know, I have all kinds of creatures. There's an aquarium. There's another bird cage with another bird. And um, oh, okay. Is this any better? That's perfect. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay. And then this is a uh, liquor cabinet that used to be a radio. And um, now in, in here, this used to be my garage. And now I call it the groove room because I decorated it all groovy. This, this is my favorite part. This is a, um, a fur wall and you can pet the wall. It's very calming. And then this is a cabinet that I decoupaged with uh, napkins. And then I did this graphic to the cabinet and uploaded it and uh, pasted it on that cabinet to make it a little more interesting. This is the little sitting area here and my big A because, you know, where else are you going to put it? I did this coffee table 
with one of my favorite songs, your happiness on the simple things. Because if you always hang your happiness on the simple things, then you always know where to find it. This is my totem pole. Let me get focused. I don't know why it's not focusing well. Okay, so here we go. And it's just little found objects and put together things and Yeah, so there's that. And then over here is my workshop, craft area, toys for my grandkids, more crafts. And uh, up here, I've got a vortex leading to my attic. I fully expect it to clear my attic out one of these days. And then the rest of the ceiling is corks in process of a design. My um, refrigerator freezer situation was very boring, so I had to jazz it up with zebra stripes. And then this wall, I stapled up this fabric and then I realized, oh no, the door doesn't go. So I had to redecorate the door. And this is my butterfly lady. And she has a floating head. Let's see if I can twist it and show you. And her hair are feathers from my Rusty, from my rooster, Rusty, who passed away a few years ago. Oh, you know what? I didn't show you earlier today, but I'll show you now. Okay, so I made this out of, I collected a bunch of wishbones and, uh, then I, I made some chicken soup and I saved every bone out of the whole chicken. And so then I made this uh, creature out of all the chicken parts. And I don't know if you can see, but the toenails, those are my fingernails I glued on there. So I call this leftover wishes. And uh, let's see, we'll go back through here. So oh, Celia, before you uh, go in there, we have a, a question about uh, the wine corks. Uh, did you drink all the wine for the wine <laughs> on your ceiling? <laughs> no, all my drunk friends did. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know how it is when you start collecting things and people find out you're collecting things. And then they just bring you more. So I just have tons of this. So I'm just gonna continue my cork uh, projects because I have so many now. <laughs> okay, so I'm not focusing very well. Here's my Christmas tree. I'll leave it up all year round so I don't have to wrestle with the uh, lights tangling. And then in here, we're going into the office. I have an old sewing machine that actually works. And over here, I have my, my favorite question propped up on my desk. It's, why not? Oh, and this little window thing, it has Einstein and a bunch of other little creatures. Otherwise, it's, it's pretty normal for an office. Except for there's, there's a chicken in a high chair there. Okay, so then walk in here. This is, this is a half bath. It used to be a full bath, but I covered up the tub and put a sideboard there. And then over here, the paintings that I let my inner child do of my creatures. And it's just kind of decorated with little personalized odds and ends. These are two portraits that two separate friends painted for me, of me. And then as we go down the hallway, now there used to be a hallway and a room when my son lived here, but I took the wall out after he moved away. And then I put a door where the window was. Now this is my music room.
And then here's another half bath. And uh, Celia, are you uh, are you a musician? Can you play the harp? I, oh yes, I am. I I actually I play uh, every Sunday at a an Italian restaurant at Prima Pasta, and um, and I also host house concerts here uh, in the habitat. And so when, one of my favorite things about this bathroom is the medicine cabinet. There are two kinds of people at a party those who will look in your medicine cabinet and those who haven't thought of it yet. So then when you open it, it's looking back at you. So it's a little surprise for those folks that are bold enough to actually open your medicine cabinet. And then we'll go down here to the master bedroom. There's a little altar here with feathers and little tchotchkes and the most noteworthy thing about this room is that this cage here is where my duck sleeps at night and he has a portrait of himself with his rabbit that another friend of mine did and he loves his rabbit. And then in here, this is the um, add-on to the master bedroom, this is the master bath. And I'm gonna step over here and angle it back so you can see there's a infrared sauna here. And then all these little doodads. This is the closet and I've got a lot of beaded curtains. Here's another beaded curtain going into, you know, that area that everybody needs one. And here's the closet with, this is a stained glass that I did years ago. And some other, some other art here, the lady with the fire and water hair. And then if you go back out this way, and through this door, you find an outdoor shower. And I, I just, I use it all year round. Thank you. And look at the, oh, look at the angel's trumpets hanging over the edge. Anyway, so there's the shower. And so when I come in from the garden, I can just come straight in here, shower off and then go into my house. So now, let's see, let's walk over here and I'll show you the, the fountains here, the spring fountains and little sitting area here with another mural window. Someone gave me a bunch of doors and I put a mural behind it so it looks like it's going into somewhere else. I love illusion. And then we'll circle back over here and take you to the rest of the garden. Lots of um, fence poetry that I got letters from someone who worked at a sign shop cutting out shapes and letters and saved them up through the years. This is, I would love to live like the river flows, surprised by its own unfolding. So there's lots of, lots of little poetry around. I did a, this, this poem here by Mary Oliver. She's one of my favorite nature poets and it's called Sleeping in the Forest. Well, there was a tree right beside it that I had to cut down, so then I had a blank canvas. So I did a self-portrait. Had it, I designed it graphically and had it printed on aluminum, and it's a um, self-portrait that depicts all of the images in the poem. Here's a hammock. Here's my little thinner corner. My neighbors are mowing their yard. A little fountain here.
flowers leaning across the walkway. This is my bird house neighborhood. Nobody lives there, unfortunately, but doesn't it look nice though? They should move in. And here's another poem. This is one that I wrote. Let me get it to vantage point, maybe over here. But it says, I'm only average looking, but impossible to miss. I've scathed myself with scratches all around my hands and wrists. But my garden is so beautiful, I keep on doing it. It's because my thorns have roses, I just can't miss it. And I hear my goose. Let's see if we can find her. This is just a little cactus garden with a big blue foot. And then on this, this is the back porch here. I took three cages apart and put them all together in one large cage for my pigeons. And then I put a mural back there so it looks like it goes on further than it does. Little fountain. And then this is the enclosure where my goose Bella and little duck Wilma stay. They sleep in here at night. This French antique bird cage houses little parakeets that I rescued not too long ago. And then we'll walk over here and see the teepee. I had some bamboo that was growing behind the big waterfall and so I harvested it. It's got big timber bamboo. Well, hi, Bella. Can you say hello? Now she's gonna be shy. <laughs> and um, anyway, I'm, I built this teepee out of it. Oh, and look, there's, there's Pippin with his rabbit. Okay, Pippin, don't start. <laughs> hold on, hold on. This is, this is Pippin, he's being bad. And this anyway. is the, uh, the beauty of live te television. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why don't you put him over there with his rabbit? <laughs> Where is he? His, he's under the... <laughs> anyway, here's the teepee. It's 16 feet high. And then I made these... See, now he's distracted with his rabbit. <laughs> Goofy. I made these uh, chairs out of shopping carts. And then I have these, these glass heads that have uh, solar light bulbs for brains. And so their brains light up at night and uh, it kind of twirls so you can see them all. Let me get focused again. There's the glass goddesses. And then Beside is, I call this up, up and away delicate little shoulders that I put wings on. And then this one up on the top has a handle for a head. This is the vegetable garden. It's got two scarecrows and lots of cantaloupes and a few other things. And then this is the bee yard. I have four hives currently, but only one uh, colony. I need to get three more colonies, but there's one right here that's active. You can see them coming and going. It's Even almost time to- Celia, do huh? you do the beekeeping yourself? Like, do you have a beekeeping output on? No, yeah. Yeah, Honey. I do it. Uh -huh. I have a, I have a bee suit that I wear when I disturb their, I mean, just walking over there, of course you don't need it, but when you lift the roof off their house, you definitely need a suit. Uh, and I harvest the honey and I sell it in my gift shop. These gazebos, little sitting areas here. And see there's, there's Pippin on his rabbit. And he's just such a weird duck. Now this is the real weird part right here. I I don't know. I hope no children are actually watching. <laughs> and this is the rabbit feeding station. And here's the 
turtle enclosure. I have box turtles in here. Uh, they're just kind of hunkered down over there right now. I have a large turtle that roams the property. Yeah, Pippin. You're such a weirdo. <laughs> and, you know, Frankie the rabbit, he kind of likes it. That's weird, too. Over here is a cow barbecue, call it barbecue, which uh, the cow spots on. And then someone, one of my renters left a polka dot rug and I thought, oh my God, I can't use that unless I cut it into the shape of the cow. So that's what I did. Okay, Bella, let's go see the pond. Come on, let's go. <laughs> oh, well, before we see the pond, let's backtrack over here and I'll show you this little one. And then there's, I call this Pebble Beach. We've got it decorated with an old man in the tea center and a whale jumping up to get in. And then over here, It's the concert area. Sometimes I have weddings here, sometimes retreats and lectures and presentations and, um, but, and house concerts mostly. A couple in the spring and a couple in the fall. The stage area. And Celia, your, uh, your yard just seems to go on forever and ever. How Exactly how big is it? Oh, well, it's uh, it's three adjoining lots and all together it comprises three quarters of an acre. And then this is a hearing stream. So it starts up here, out of the fish's mouth and comes down. And to here and down and over all the way over here. And then there's a reservoir under the bridge and then it uh, recirculates with a submersible pump. And it just gives the, the birds oxygenated water to drink, keeps it fresh. There's a little, uh, little fairy garden here that the children seem to enjoy. And then over here is a fire pit area. And then in here is my gift shop. Uh, just stuff that I make and sell. This is the Quirky Bird gift shop. We'll just peek in real quick. Um, cards, books, photography, crochet, and I'm sold out of honey, but sometimes when I have honey in here. And then this room is the relaxation room. There's a great massage chair. There's a pillow tub. There's a far infrared heat mat, she machine, TV. And then I did this airbrush to this wall. I did not enjoy the airbrush technique. So that's the only one I ever did. I was so happy to be finished. And then uh, this property here, it was a single family residence with just a regular lawn. And I split it into four apartments. So they all have themed names. This one is the Honey Bee Apartment. And then we continue down here, there's the Tortoise Shell Apartment. And I actually had some turtle shell that I, planted orchids in. And then the peacock apartment is here and a few more orchids. And then look who's at the pond. There's Bella and Wilma. And then this is this is the twelve thousand gallon pond. There's a bog over here that's a major filtration system. And then this 
aquarium is upside down but filled with water to the top so that I put the food in there and it floats to the top and the fish swim up in there and and eat their food and it keeps you know who from eating the food and I've got let's see I'll show you some oh here's my here's my turtle red ear slider here and you can see the fish are over here in the deep end right now but the koi are huge the, this girl here she's probably she's probably two and a half feet long and there's the big waterfall and you see the bamboo growing back from behind it i have a couple of elephants art installations because I just love elephants. And another one over here. Kind of into the glare of the sun. But there's that. And a little few flowers. Now this is an aviary. And these doves are all the offspring of the pair that you saw in the house. I'll go inside so we don't to look through the screen. And then the little, the little ones are finch. And then there's all the offspring of flower and bee. There's a bobble tree. There's lots of perches. And as they say, that's the nickel tour. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Um... Yeah, oh, so, you're so welcome. Uh, yeah, there's a couple uh, questions that come in. Uh, so you have just a, a huge, luscious garden. You know, how, how much of your time is taken up just keeping it up, you know, uh, maintaining it? Well, um, a lot of it. <laughs> Probably just the general maintenance, which involves cleaning all of the bird enclosures, and doing the pond maintenance every day, feeding all the creatures, takes me an hour every day. Now, you know, sometimes more if there's a lot of leaves falling in the pond in the fall, it does take longer. Um, but you know, there's always something, uh, but it's a labor of love. It's not hard, it's just unrelenting. And uh, is uh, was it always your dream to have such a, a magical garden or is it just something that just kind of well you know it, it kind of developed but I when I was four years old I ended up in bible school accidentally and you know I just loved the story of the garden of Eden and so I uh there's my article that was in the chronicle um I was so enchanted by the Garden of Eden story that I, I just I just had to see this garden. And then by the end of the story, it was gone and I was just broken hearted. And so the first time I prayed to God when I was four was to ask him to give it back. So in that sense, I've always wanted to do this, but I didn't know what, you know, what was in store for me necessarily that there was no grand plan in my mind anyway, just something that I developed because I kept, you know, my favorite question is why not? And so I kept saying, why not? And, and this is what I got. Well, well why not indeed. Um, <laughs> so, so you have such a, a wonderful homing garden. People don't have to just view on YouTube, uh, it's actually open for people to come in in person and visit and stay in, right? Apartments and a three bedroom house that are all temporary rentals, fully furnished, fully equipped, um, ready to live in. And uh, they're listed on Airbnb and, and also on my website, celia.com. And so anybody can go there and, and see and come and visit. I'd also, I'm always happy to do a tour, large or small, it doesn't matter. I'm 
I'm happy, always, always happy to uh, make new friends and show them around. And um, uh, there's something else I was going to tell you, but I've forgotten now. Okay, so uh, Celia.com, uh, mm -hmm. people can go on that website and learn more about you and your home, right. art, and, and book a right. day. Yeah. Oh, I know what it was. I was going to tell you um, that the garden is a certified backyard habitat by the National Wildlife Federation. And um, sometimes I do talks on how to create your own habitat like this and what the criteria is and how you go about it. Honestly, you can do you can do a backyard habitat even on a balcony. Uh, you can create your own ecosystem in surprisingly little space because my garden is always 10 degrees cooler in the summer than the rest of the city because the canopy the canopy pulls the air and then the air cools by the moisture and then by the time it gets to the ground it's 10 degrees cooler and it's 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 surprisingly easy to do. People don't realize you don't have to have a huge area to create an ecosystem. Mm, so they can, uh, so they just look you up and then they can learn how to have their own little garden of Eden if they wanted. You bet. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if everybody did it? Oh my, a whole planet. Oh, especially with the, the summers in, in Texas. I know in, here in Austin, 10 degrees cooler sounds very... Yeah, it makes a big difference for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you so much, Celia. We really appreciate you. Uh, oh, thank you, Kevin. I was, it was always a pleasure. Thank you for mm -hmm. the invitation. Well, thank you again, and you have a wonderful evening. Bye. We will see you later. Thank you. You too. Bye.